Hey Aries, welcome to your quarterly reading for October, November, and December. I am Charlene Lazette. Let's dive in and see, whoa, what's going on for you for the next quarter, the last quarter before we wrap up 2024. That is crazy. Whether you are new or whether you are returning, a massive thank you to you. Either way, I hope you click subscribe and become a part of our collective Aries. And uh, to those of you that are part of our membership here on YouTube, um, ooh, interesting. Um, I'm not going to pull those because there's too many. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. That was the King of Swords behind the moon card. Um, so let's see what's going on here. Okay. The night of, okay. So October is looking pretty interesting. Look, astrologically, we have that full moon in your sign on the 17th. Um, it, that's a big deal for you because it's wrapping up something that started back in April of, uh, that's too many of this year. Okay. Uh, with that new moon solar eclipse. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Okay. November. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, here's what I'm gonna say to you. If over the next three months, somebody tries to bring a fight to you, do not engage, do not. I'm not saying don't respond. I'm not saying don't stand up for yourself. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is do not instigate, do not engage in their arguments, in their fights, okay, in their drama. They're going to be doing everything that they possibly can to get you to, um, to drag them in to their, like to be dragged into their, their fucking toxicity. Don't do it. You have three nights and this tells me that there's still something here that you're having to learn and you have Mars at the bottom and I have denial here. So there's something here over the next three months, Aries, that you're really going to be learning and needing to pay attention to. And you're going to have to learn this and pay attention to it because it is part of your soul's growth. It is like the last hurrah before the nodes move from Aries, um, South North node, Libra South node to Pisces. This is going to happen January 11th. So the last quarter here of this year is a, a big school of hard knock lives. Okay. And I don't think this is bad. I think this is you having to learn because you're leveling up. You're, you're going through a next stage, right? You could think about the nodes changing the full moon as your graduation. And so naturally when we graduate, we learn things and then we apply them to the real world. And that's what's happening here, baby boo. And I don't just say that to say that because I have lots of freaking Aries placements. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know, what do you mean I have to learn more things? Okay. Let's talk about the fact that you got Aphrodite as your amulet. This is telling me that over the next three months, your wealth, your self-love, your relationship to self is going to be very important for you. Okay. Chiron being an Aries may have been teaching you a lot about your self-worth, um, your relation to self, your material possessions, how you show up in this world, etc. Okay. And this is about you understanding that you are valuable, you are worthy, and it's okay for you to be you. You don't need to be for any, like you don't need to show up for anybody else. You show up for you. Does that make sense? When we look at October, the Knight of Wands, the Knight of Pentacles, the Fool, again, please do not rush anything. Please do not try and force things to happen. Please do not try to think you're one-upping somebody or you're outsmarting them. Don't do that. Stay humble. Stay present. Stay connected to God. Stay connected to being practical and grounded and rooted and focused, okay? Because that's what's going to help you to move forward in this path here of the Fool and start this new journey. If you try and pull the wool over somebody's eyes. If you try and go tit for tat with somebody, it could backfire. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. Okay. I do like that you have this card here, which says star brothers, horse, energy, protection, safety, loyalty, trust. Now, when we look at November, we have strength, the hair font and hermit. When I tell you November is going to be Novembering. Yes, it is. The strength card is very karmic and actually is very much connected to this year because this year is an eight year and strength is eight in tarot. And the strength is all about um, courage, 
vitality, okay, to persevere, to create balance, okay, the inner strength within to go after what we desire. And then when we pair it with the Hierophant, which is about conformity, higher learning, okay, connecting to source consciousness, receiving the downloads, being open to be a student of the universe, letting the universe teach you, okay, then, then you're going to be offered new insights, new ways of seeing. I also feel whatever, whether you're in a relationship or not, I feel like November for you, Sag um, Sagittarius, sorry, uh, the, Venus moves into Sagittarius in November. Um, for you, Aries, is going to be a big month of introspection, of self-reflection. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that Pluto is in its last degree of Capricorn stationing direct on October 11th, and then it's moving into Aquarius. So whatever house Capricorn rules in, it's going to leave you some sort of gift, some sort of like opportunity, some sort of like parting gift, and then it moves into your house of, of Aquarius. Wherever that house is, is going to see a lot of revolution, a lot of change, a lot of um, activism, a lot of drive, a lot of passion, okay? And this is because Pluto is death and transformation. It destroys to rebuild. And Aquarius is the people. It's revolution. It's activism. It is innovation. It is chaos, okay? But like beautiful chaos. Like you ever look at a painting and you're like, whoa, and it just looks chaotic, but it's beautiful at the same time. You think about like Albert Einstein, mad scientist energy. Okay. Now when we look into December, we'll do love at the very end. We have death, the four of cups and the knight of swords. So source is saying, wrap this fucking thing up. Whatever this thing is for you, Aries, whether it's a friendship, a relationship, a battle, an argument, court, or whether it's fucking, um, you know, it, this could look like a, um, a career. There's something here. You're, you're got to wrap it up. You, it's unsustainable for you to keep going in this thing. It says denial. Acknowledge my fear, but I replace it with the inside of awareness. And trust me, trust you. The moment that you declare that you are done or you, you sit in the energy of acceptance going, okay, well, if this is a battle I have to go through, I'm going to go through this battle and I'm going to trust that source is going to take me on the other side to be victorious. That's the moment where everything changes for you. That's the moment where you will start seeing the victory the success, the happiness. Death to the Four of Cups tells me that, you know, you may be really bored and annoyed with the situation, You, but you're not wanting to wrap it up. And Source is saying, wrap it the fuck up before I wrap it for you. You know, death is death. It's Plutonian energy. It also is destruction, right? It's, it's at the mercy of the universe and allowing this thing to end for something new to begin. But you're not willing, you're not wanting to take the, the new opportunity. You're like, but I like this and I like, maybe you're like addicted to the chaos or the adrenaline rush that you get from whatever this challenge obstacle is. And Source is going, move the frick on. Move the frick on. How many times do I got to tell you, move on, move on, move on? You know, that's what Source is saying here. And, and the reason why I started off saying don't fight is because you got the five of wands on the sun, especially if you have kids. My God, please, if you are in any type of legal disputes, this is not legal advice. I'm not your lawyer. I don't know your situation. But the best thing I can tell you is to do what's in the best interest of your child. And it may not be what you want it to be. But at the end of the day, it's for your child. And kids grow up and kids remember. They remember the parent who talked bad about the other parent. They remember the parent who wasn't there. They remember the parent who made empty promises. They remember the parent who caused their other parent strife. They see it all. So can you put your ego aside? Okay. In love and romance, we have the 10 of swords, we have the queen of wands, and we have the ace of wands. So there is also accumulation, two of cups at the bottom of the deck here, and the wheel of fortune. There is a cycle wrapping up in your love life as well. Maybe some of you are realizing that the relationship that you had with XYZ person is done. Maybe you're going through a divorce, a separation. Maybe that's what this is right? Maybe you're like, frick, I need to go. I need to get a divorce from this person. I can't be with this person anymore. And maybe you tried and you did everything you possibly could with the seven of pentacles here, five of wands, but it's just, you guys are not compatible long-term. There could be infidelity and cheating. Yeah. Another woman, another man. Wheel again, dude. If this thing has wrapped up its cycle, let it wrap up. Let it wrap up because source has your back. Okay. You know, my advice to you is focus on the future. Don't focus on the past and a focus, like don't identify with your trauma, identify with the desired life that you want. I'm going to pop um, this video here about how to manifest anything into your life. And if you want to book a session, work with me at any capacity, you need some help and clarity in this journey. It's in the description box below. Thank you for your likes, your comments, your shares, your subscribes. We will see you later, alligators. Peace out. Bye.